dear students welcome i am mrs shanti i am going to deliver on the lecture on level of constructions for epg patsala and uh, today we are going to discuss about how we are going to do the constructions in for the for a building and uh, the basic needs of a human being include food shelter and clothing shelter includes construction of building to fulfill the requirements of protection for nature for natural calamity construction includes different levels leading to completion of buildings now objective of this uh, lecture is to impart knowledge of levels of construction awareness on different methods of construction on structural elements to impart knowledge on functions of the structural components and to sustain the quality of construction now what is construction is now it is the process of constructing the building or the infrastructure in any location it comprises of three main stages namely planning designing and financing now the types of construction are one that is whether it can be a residential or non residential buildings and infrastructure which consists of constructing of dams bridges highways railways and etc and industry for the refineries transmission line foundation of manufacturing plants etc process of construction includes funding brainstorming with contractors inquiry with promoters rough idea about the executors inquiry with the neighbors rough estimation of the project schematic refinement 3d model developing and plan authorization stages of the of construction includes planning what are we going to do under planning planning includes determining the resources required for the project namely the material required for construction time period for completion suppliers of materials human resources that is the labors needed and the equipments that is required now designing it includes creation of plan for execution according to one's convenience mainly this is done with consultation of the customer nowadays 3d walk in through of the plan is being showed to the customers for them to have an idea of their plan ambience utility services and architectural view financing this is the most important part of the construction since without the financial commitments nothing can be done so at the early stage of the project built up area materials to be used all interiors finishes and facilities required are decided and a rough estimate is worked out usually 5% increase in cost is being added in consideration with the period of completion prime mira software is being used widely at the consulting offices to do accurate estimation financial commitments may be taken through even the bank loans also now let us take a case study on the construction of a residential building first is the paper works that is we have to do the paper uh, paper works before the start of the actual construction which includes the following steps first one is preparing the plan of the house as per the requirement of the customer second is the estimation of the total cost of the building including the material labors etc getting approval of the drawing from concerned authorities which can be done through pre dcr online submission arranging for bank loans tenders etc setting of a team of labors either on basis of hiring or on daily basis for construction work the first level after completing the paper works the first level of construction in field includes the construction of the foundation now a foundation is a substructure of a building that transfers the load to the ground now a building should have a strong foundation if it is to last for a longer period so the types of foundation includes so a shallow foundation that is the depth of the footing is less than the width of the footing example types of shallow foundation are individual strap combined mat etc now the deep foundation the depth of the footing is greater than the width of the footing examples are pile caisson foundations depending upon the type uh, and the functionality of the buildings type uh, and the type of the soil the type of the foundation is decided now we go on to how to mark the foundation on the ground now it has been done using the central line method the proposed building site is first cleared of all the junks plants and trees 
prepare the central line sketch for the plan and set out straight line greater than the length and the width of the building positions width and the breadth of the foundations or the columns are marked on the ground as shown in the figure measure the width of the foundation and mark it along the strings set out for two opposite walls then set out the string between these two points and fasten the ends with the pegs now the plumber is used to check that each peg is directly beneath the outside the foundation line after marking we'll go for the earthwork excavation of the earth along the boundaries of the foundation are done as per the drawing defined length and the breadth and the depth now general excavation are made with some clearance to the size of the foundation say about 6 inches on either side as shown in the figure now usually depth of the excavation is been decided from the neighborhood evidences technically it depends upon the type of the soil it varies from the from 4 foot to 6 foot or 2.5 meters to 5.5 meters usually the main consideration in deciding the depth of the foundation is the building should rest on a hard strata so that the building load can be distributed to ground safely without any settlement the construction of the foundation again coming to the second stage is concreting of foundation first level of foundation is first the level of the foundation is checked before starting starting the concreting work it must be noted that the levels of the foundation throughout the building must be the same any difference in level would cause differential settlement leading to failure of building for a depth of 3 inches the concrete with 40 mm coarse aggregate is poured and ramped to form a strong base now this base acts on contact layer for the distribution of the load from the building to the ground that is to the soil evenly as shown in the figure over the base a mat with column with steel rods are placed vertically as shown in the figure and concrete of ratio 1 is to 6 is to 10 are poured for a depth of 6 inches the base mat is made of steel bars on both the directions concrete mix is decided usually of ratio 1 is to 4 is to 8 and is used for the foundation it can be even extended to 1 is to 5 is to 10 or 1 is to 6 is to 10 ratio now what is that 1 is to 6 1 part of cement per cubic concrete Uh, and four parts of coarse aggregate namely sand per cubic concrete and eight parts of coarse aggregate locally known as jelly the mat is surrounded by the farm work of size to the foundation of width and the concrete ratio of 1 is to 5 is to 10 is poured and this forms a pedestrian to a height of 6 inches over the pedestrian again the farm work is made for the width of the column and concentrated up to the level of um, ground forming the base for column as shown in the figure floor levels of a house are usually higher than the natural ground the rise from the ground level is treated as thickness of the floor and is filled with soil or quarry dust and compacted the remaining sides of the excavation are filled with excavated soil up to the ground level the process level 2 construction of plinth beam that is the body uh, first we'll see what is the plinth beam is it is the beam constructed at the ground or the ground level forming base course for wall its function is to evenly distribute the building load to the ground through foundation constructed below it as shown in the figure now plinth area it is known as the floor area or the carpet area or even the built up area or the plinth area now it is the total area utilized for the utility in a building construction of the plinth once the foundation is completed then the plinth beam of width 9 inches and depth of 9 inches with reinforcement of steel is built over the ground over which the walls are constructed depth of the plinth beam is either filled with soil uh, compacted or quarry dust now this forms the base for the flooring and since the flooring is in contact with the soil there is a chance for termites entering into the building and this can be avoided by providing a termite coating through painting the plinth beam 
there is also another protection needed at this level namely the damp proofing as shown in the figure since the moisture of the soil below might cause dampness to the wall causing damages and deterioration to the structure farm work now it is the mold for the structure to pour the fresh concrete and form the required shape and size level 3 includes the framed structure it is the connecting together the horizontal vertical and flat structural mem components namely beam column and slab to safely distribute the building load to the ground and also to act as a skeletal or skeleton of the building as shown in the figure from the figure it is noted that the weight of the head which is considered as the slab is transferred to the shoulder bones that is the beam and the weight of them is transferred to the vertical that is the spinal bones columns and these loads are transferred to the ground through the pelvic girders and the thigh bones to the heel bones thus the weight from the slabs to the beams and from them to the columns then distributed to the soil through foundation this shows the importance of the framed structure column now it is a structural component of a building which is vertically extended from the foundation it carries the load from the horizontal structural members normally it is reinforced concrete structure beam it is the horizontal structural member and which forms the base for the roof and carries the load from the slabs it is also a reinforced concrete structure the slab it is a flat structural member covering the entire built up area it rests on the beams and it is a reinforced concrete structure construction of the framed structure the column from the foundation are extended to the height of the lintel level that is normally at 7 foot and with the help of the farm work and concreting at the lintel level the lintel beam is constructed along the sun shed connecting all the columns of the building above the lintel level column is extended to the roof level say about 3 foot from the lintel beam above the column at 10 foot beam is constructed across every column connecting them horizontally the slab connecting all the columns and the beam is constructed above the beam to give the shelter to the building as shown in the figure thus finishing the construction of the framed structure lintel a horizontal rcc reinforced concrete beam built across the top of the doors or the windows opening of the doors or the windows of a building need to be supported with lintels as shown in the figure now this can be done by constructing the beam at the top of these openings connected horizontally from the columns its main aim is to carry the loads of the building above the opening and prevent it from acting directly on the doors or the window frames and causing failure roofing a flat surface above the beam and the column giving a shelter to the building there are many types of roofing first one depending on the material asbestos a uh, roofing concrete roofing sheet roofing truss roofing tile roofing and thatched roofing depending upon the shape flat roofing sloped roofing arch roofing type of the roofing depends upon the customer's wish and the purpose of the building and the budget and etc construction of roofing first a farm work is made about the beam connecting the beams and the columns of the entire plan using their either steel sheets or wooden planks they are supported to the ground using the props as shown in the figure then the reinforcement of the steel rods are binded with the steel wires running in both the directions are placed above the farm work with the cover blocks kept in between them to maintain the thickness of the slab as shown in the figure now the cement concrete of 1 is to 3 is to 6 is poured into the farm work and ramped with the help of the rods so that the concrete fills all the corners of the slab this setup is left for about 28 days and is cured by stagnating the potable water by ponding to gain the strength on the 28th day the inner props are removed first and then the outer near the beams and the columns are removed usually the thickness of the beam of the slab ranges from 100 to 125 mm precautions to be followed in the farm work for roofing no gap should be seen in between the the sheets or the planks 
and the sheets must be oiled properly so that when removing concrete should not stick to the sheets papers or the felts etc should not be used for filling the gaps in between the sheets sheets should be properly supported to the ground while concreting so so that it does not impropriate the shape materials from farm work should be such that it should not absorb water and should be stiff to resist the concreting load and should have a smooth surface level 4 is a car is a masonry work once the framed structure is completed now we'll go for the masonry work now construction of the brick wall in between the columns are done as shown in the figure masonry works are carried out with a cement mortar placed of 1 is to 4 to 1 is to 6 ratio that is one part cement and four or six part of sand first a line of mortar is placed over the plinth beam and over it the bricks are arranged in such a way that the joints are discontinuous while using bricks for construction it should be kept wet by soaking it in water for 1 hour before usage verticality of wall is checked using the plumber After construction of the walls in between the columns it is cured for minimum period of 1 week using potable water by means of pipe hose This would help the cement mortar bonding in between the cores of the bricks strong in strength openings of doors and windows as per plan are left open while constructing the walls level 5 is flooring and it is the lower surface of the room on which one can walk there are types of uh, flooring includes cement concrete floor brick flooring tile flooring mosaic flooring muram or the mud flooring and the wooden flooring all these types depend upon the customer's wish and also the budget and the functionality of the building construction that once the plinth beam is constructed two or three rows of the rubble masonry of brick masonry is built over it and this forms the thickness of for the base course of flooring and then the total depth is partially filled either with soil or quarry dust and remaining with 40 mm a uh, metal concrete thus strong and leveled base surface is formed over it a cement mortar of 1 is to 3 to 1 is to 4 mix is laid for a thickness of 3 mm in order to get a smooth surface this forms the flooring for a building and depending on required type of flooring by the customer floor finish is laid over it floor finish floor can be either left with cement mortar coated with cement slurry known as cement flooring or it can be even finished with natural stones example marble granite etc and artificial concrete um, tiles such as vitrified sahabat etc stuck on it for the ambiance purpose qualities of the floor finish it should be durable noiseless should have some ambiance water repellent fire resistant and low maintenance cost types of floor finishes resilient example you have got vinyl wood rubber flooring it is hard example a granite mosaic marble flooring and smooth example that is tile flooring level 6 is for plastering generally to prevent moisture entering the building and also for ambiance the internal walls and external walls are plastered using cement mortar mortar for plastering plastering work used generally is 1 is to 3 or 1 is to 5 plastering thickness must not be more than 0.75 inches as shown in figure while plastering it must be noted that the cement mortar not neither stiff nor lean because consistency of mortar influences the strength of it first the surface of the brick wall is made rough by combing it with brush then one coat of the plastering with lean mix is splashed over the surface so that the mortar adheres to the surface of the wall roughly then the second coat with the correct proportion mortar is applied on the wall surface and leveled with a strong light wooden bars then with this leveled and should ensure that the surface is leveled and smooth in nature curing the process of sprinkling water on the constructed co- construction components such as the beam columns slabs walls etc made of concrete or cement mortar is known as curing it serves two purpose namely one prevents the loss of moisture from concrete and second one maintains the favorable temperature by hydration before attaining the hardened stage of concrete types of curing curing can be done by ponding steam curing gunny bags 
sprinkling of water, membrane curing. Depending upon the type of the building to be constructed, type of curing also changes. Normally, ponding is followed at roof curing, gunny bags at the columns and the beams and sprinkling of water on the plastered walls. Level 7 Services Services are needed for every building in irrespective of type of building. Different types of services are provided during construction. These are electricity supply, gas supply, water supply, sanitary etc. Electricity supply Conduits for electricity supply are fixed on the walls before plastering. For fans, the conduits are fitted on the roof before concreting. Water supply. Plumbing works are done after the masonry walls are built for water supply. Pipelines for wash basins, bathroom fittings and for the other needs are done on the walls by breaking the bricks. Sanitary. Toilets are necessary irrespective of type of building constructed. While constructing flooring level for toilets are lowered by one foot and P or the yes trap pipes are fitted and packed tightly with the filling all its sides. Pipes from toilets are con connected to the central sanitary pipeline through floors before concreting. Waterproof coating is applied in the toilet room walls and on floors to prevent the moisture entering the walls dampness. Gas lines gas lines are fixed outside the kitchen in case provisions are given separately. Gas line remains open in air and these facilities are necessary only for residential food industries etc only. Now I'd like to conclude the session saying that scope of this module is to familiarize you with the different levels of construction which help you to supervise any building anyone comes across in their lifetime. Knowledge on basic terms of construction would help them to easily communicate with contractors, promoters regarding terms and conditions of the contract and will be able to examine the risks and the responsibilities involved in the constructional activities, understand residential commercial Etc. Any type of building construction systems and materials and practices. Integrate plans, specifications and other construction documents able to do detailed quantity surveying.